What is up everybody, I am Shazel Games and I'm here once again with another episode of Dust and Elysian Tale. In the last episode, we started making our way up to Ginger, hopefully, and also I just fell all the way down here and okay, cool. Whew, I didn't realize there were very dangerous spikes. This is like that one ep that one level of uh, Super Mario on the Wii U, so, uh, New Super Mario Bros. Wii U, where uh, you're on the platform and it's rising up and you have to dodge. Though I think that's in more than one Mario game. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Anyway. Dust almost decided he wanted to explode right there. Ooh, I leveled up again. They are th the level ups come like nothing. It's like, you always get them. Like, come on, let me save real fast because I haven't saved. Um, let me go down here real fast to see what's down here. There's a chest right there, but we need a bomb fruit to get to it. I'll do it. I will get the bomb fruit first. There we go. Here's the bomb fruit. Oh, we have to escort it through, huh? No, wait, come back. Stop moving. All right, come on, bomb fruit. We're going to do it. We're going to make this happen one way or another. I'm going to find you. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you one way or another. I'm going to get you over to that bomb wall. Ow. I don't give a damn about my bad reputation. Hold on, this guy just pushes. us- there we go. Oh, never mind. I thought we can just like fall all the way down and just do it over again, but I guess not. Alright, so I'll just cut back to when I mag get the fucking bomb for- alright. Where are you going? Come back. Come here. Stay right there. Don't move. Look cute. You know. You know what's up. You got this. You're a cute little bomb fruit. Here, come on. Oh, 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 don't fall into the spikes. E. E. Stay right there. No. Mm, fuck. Fuck. You motherfucker. You knew. You knew you were gonna throw yourself into those spikes and just fucking die and be like, ha, ah, fuck you, Shazel. Eat my fucking dick. My bomb fruit penis that I don't have because I'm just a fruit and life is a nightmare. I know that it's not fair. <laughs> Nobody cares because I'm a bomb fruit in this world. Etc. Simple plan, everyone. Is that simple plan? It should be simple plan. I'm just a kid and life is a nightmare. I'm just a kid and also I'm a grown man. But I sing about being a kid to seem relatable to angsty teenagers. So I can profit off them. That's what that is, you know. No, no. Okay, cool. We did it. We did it. Come on, you bomb fruit motherfucker. You gonna blow up this... This... There we go. Now, give me this fucking chest. I hope it was something good. There's a ring. Master ring of focus. Alright, now that we've got that stupid fucking nonsense, we can continue. Windy. I hope we're getting a ginger, because it kind of feels like we aren't. But I honestly hope we are. I bet you ginger's like dead or something. They're gonna show up and she's gonna be fucking like dead in the snow. Her blood's gonna be everywhere. Like she's gonna be like a female character who had to die for plot purposes. The game just sort of freaked out right there for some reason. Dropped some huge frames. I dropped every frame. Speaking of dropped frames, it's been a long time since I've streamed. Like about like a week and a half, two weeks. Just because, uh, same reasons for, uh, not recording. I just haven't really been feeling up to streaming. I mean, I'd love to get back into it, but when I, when, when I get the chance, I might, I might stream when I'm at Almost God's House this weekend. Ow. Fucking. So as you guys currently know, I don't have any, like, any videos set to go out on, in the Sunday slot. Like, I have videos come out every day of the week, except Sunday. And that's just because I don't have any, like, I want to have a day of not recording anything, you know? The day of not having to record. So, um, I took Sunday off, but I, I was thinking of putting something there, you know? But I don't know what. If you'd like to suggest, like, a genre of game or something for me to put there when, uh, when this video goes out, let me know. Because I will happily take into consideration your requests of what you want me what you think I should put in the Sunday slot. Because there's a chest right here. Because um I just feel like that the Sunday slot is the most abused in my in my terms and like not an abused, more like neglected. You feel? Like I don't want to neglect my poor 
my poor Sunday slot. Alright, so I have to climb back up because I fell to get a chest. Fuck. I like how the music's just sort of cut out and uh, it's just been replaced with the wind howling. I like that in games where uh, the music cuts out and the only thing that's left is the ambiance. It just, it just really sets a mood, you know? Alright, let's try this again, please. So, um, what's, well, like, yeah, like I said, it's one of my favorite things is when the game audio cuts out, the only thing that's there is the is the ambiance from the wind howling or something. Let's continue with the game and hopefully find Ginger, like, please. I just, I just want Ginger. This area is calm. There, there was a road here. I remember it before that day. All right, interesting. Dust just sort of had like a moment of clarity. Interesting. Look up ahead, a village. All the way up here? Do you think it's that moonblood camp Kane was talking about? Could be. No, it's something else. It's en enough talking. Let's get up there. Ooh, a village hidden in the snow, high above a uh, oh. Aurora village. Ooh, General Gaius guy. What? No. Impossible! Cassius! What did you call me? Who are you? What are you doing in this place? You... You were dead! No. No, this is not possible. I don't know what demon you are, but you will not step any closer! Kill this... thing! Alright, interesting. So Gaius' men uh, think we're a zombie. Which is interesting, because uh, I think our other soul might have been this Cassius gentleman, and uh, the soul we're currently playing as is Dust. That seems to be a safe assumption, right? Like, I I'm pretty sure that's the case. They're really good at telegraphing their attacks. Alright, we just sort of killed those guys and they disappeared. Why, why destroy such a peaceful place? We didn't want any of this. Dust, what are you talking about? And who is Cassius? That's not... It's not my name. I'd remember it. I'd know it when I heard it. So, um, interesting. That's my theory right now, is that our other soul is is Cassius. And that the current soul we are is Dust. This village is abandoned. Presumably dead. Looks like this place has been destroyed for quite some time. A year, actually. Huh? How do you know that? This was Ginger's village. I was here one year ago. According to Fuse, according to Ginger, I helped murder everyone in this village. Oh, dust. But I don't remember any of it. I remember this place, but it feels like it's been more than a year. Ara, what does it mean? It only means that things are not as they seem. Explore the village further, dust. Let us see what secrets it hides. So I think in the beginning cutscene, that was us uh, slaughtering everyone in the village. And Ginger was the child that we spared. This house. Do you remember something, Dust? This is impossible. Alright, let's go in the house. Dust? How? Do you see now? But how, Ara? I don't understand. I don't understand either. The answers lie above dust. Above where? In the chandelier? The answer is... Oh, this isn't a chandelier. This is a hole in the ceiling. Holy <laughs> shit. Wow. Uh, that was a huge oversight on my part. It's weird how that chandelier was still working. And also, how is there light streaming inside? It's really dark outside. Like that, see? A cutscene? Ginger. She was sleeping right here on the night I came to say goodbye, but I hesitated. I didn't want to wake her, didn't want her to worry about me. She couldn't know what I was about to do. Dust, what are you saying? She couldn't know that I was about to go avenge our parents. You mean, your? But how? What's going on here? Random anime I... cutscene. I remember now, but how? How can I have helped destroy this village, but be a victim of that same act? That's impossible. 
Only impossible for a creature with a single soul. Ginger. Those eyes. I know those eyes. So, Mithrarin, you finally see the truth. Interesting. Who are you? Random cutscene. I'm Melda Grey Eyes, leader of the Moonblood people. Well, what's left of them, that is. What did you mean just then, that I can finally see the truth? What do you know about me? His eyes, Elder. They are Jin's eyes. They do look remarkably similar to your brother's, yes. That is because his soul lives on within dust. What? However, to suit our needs, we required two souls. The soul of innocence is a noble thing, but without skill, without power, dust would have been struck down just as easily as your brother was on that fated day. No. So we combined your brother's soul with that of his murderer, the royal assassin known as Cassius. They perished at the same time, forever entwined. Never before had I heard of such an event. Oh, so I had it backwards. We're currently Cassius, but we used to be this just Jin character. You murderer! My parents did nothing wrong. You have been deceived, little one. Your parents turned against their king, an act of pure treason. What resistance there was, was led by your family alone. You destroyed my village, murdered my friends and family. You will not survive this day! I take no joy in slaughtering one as young as you, child. But you have forced my hand. A grave injustice was done that day. Cassius murdered a defenseless djinn, but his pride and arrogance proved to be his undoing. But how? How can this... this thing be my brother? It's not possible. I couldn't even remember you when we met. You are djinn, yes. But you are also Cassius. Two souls, forever at odds. One of innocence, one of power. Together you form the one we call Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust. I never knew what happened. Jin just disappeared one night. I had always hoped he would turn up alive someday, that he would come back. But could you really be him? Yes and no. I don't know. I. I mean, I am. I am, but I'm not. You know. I imagine you have many questions. Please, do not hesitate to ask them. Uh, I might as well just go through all the question options and just keep silent for you guys. Who, or I guess, what am I? You are what my people call Sen Mithrarin, he who is born of the dust, created from the essence of the life thread itself. You see, my people have been on the verge of extinction for a great many years. General Gaius planned to eradicate us once and for all. And while our warriors are proud and strong, what chance would we have against such a powerful foe? To defeat General Gaius and save our people, we would need a warrior capable of standing against an entire army. This warrior would also need to be pure of heart, incorruptible. So that's why you picked Cassius and Jin. Just like you said, opposites. Exactly. Cassius was one of the greatest warriors this world has ever seen. And Jin's purity of heart would help guide our warrior to save our kind. From their fallen souls, you were born. Born to save us. To save this world. Why did I only remember now? I didn't even recognize Ginger when I met her. You may possess the souls of two separate beings, but your body and mind are your own. You were created to save this world, so we felt giving you memories of either soul would simply distract you from the task at hand. I had no idea who I was, what my purpose was. 
Uh, you say that, but in all cases, you did exactly what we intended you to do. You saved complete strangers outside of Aurora Village. You stopped our wayward brother Fuse from destroying all that we sought to save. You saved Mudpot and brought the waters of life back into this land. You purged a demonic rage from this land and even helped two old souls find peace once more. You may not have known your purpose, but that did not stop you from fulfilling it. And now I'm here. Yes, now you are here. And we can finish this fight once and for all. Who was Fuse? He said he was a Moonblood, but he looks nothing like you. Fuse. He was once a fine warrior, and a close friend of Ginger's family. He would help transport goods between this village and our camp. After the village was destroyed, I guess he lost his mind. He was horribly disfigured after the attack. The only way he could survive was in a special suit of magical armor that I helped to construct. He demanded we attack General Gaius right away, but I would not hear any of it. He would have killed us all in the name of vengeance. We would not have stood a chance. When I refused to send our warriors into battle, he called me a coward and vowed that he would destroy Gaius with or without my help. I fear the very armor we made to save his life had corrupted his mind and body beyond repair. Poor guy. If only we could have gone through to him somehow. No, you're right to kill him. If he had remained alive, there's no telling what damage he could have done. Ginger is right. Fuse was beyond saving. For all our sakes, I hope the same is not true of the world he sought to protect. How does the Blade of Ara fit into all this? What is it, exactly? It is one of the five blades of Elysium, ancient weapons forged when our kind were many, and the way of the flameless light was commonplace. Wait, wait, wait. What the heck is the way of the flameless light? A path we Moonbloods continue to follow. It is a way of living, a way of thought, that allows us to make use of a power both old and great. Magic without magic. I am so confused. Surely, as Nimbat Sword Guardian, you've studied the ancient doctrines. You must know, in the event that the sword is summoned by its rightful owner, you are obligated to follow. I may have skipped over that chapter? You haven't answered my question. The Blades of Elysium were created to guide their sword bearer's dust. I was summoned to your side to ensure a balance was maintained between the souls within you. Ah, my old friend. It is good to hear your voice once more. It has been a long time, Master. Wait just a second. How can you possibly know each other? My clan's been keeping the sword hidden for over 200 years. Master Grey Eyes has lived for a very long time, Fidget. Longer than any of you. So you were sent to keep an eye on me? To help you reach your true potential. Nothing more. I have no more questions. What now? You must join us in the Moonblood Camp to the north in the Everdawn Basin. That isn't anywhere near the Everdawn Volcanoes, is it? They are one and the same, yes. Well, that's fantastic. Volcanoes? Indeed. What a better place to hide than in the most volatile land in all the kingdom. Oh, I know. How about a peaceful meadow? Or a quiet forest? Or someplace that doesn't explode every ten minutes? Dust, your friend seems awfully tense. No, I'm fine. Come on, let's go to the Blowy Oak Mountains. Really, I'm serious. Fidget, you need to have more faith in me. I'll have faith in you when you have faith in yourself. How about it, huh? Who are you, really? I am... I... Uh... You see? You still haven't figured it out yet! Lizard guy tells you right to your face, and you still don't know! Fidget, please calm down. You mustn't test your friend like this. I just... <sighs> if I'm gonna follow you to the literal end of this world, I need to know who I'm following, and why. I understand, Fidget. 
You're right. I can't ask you to follow me. But I can. Fidget, you have stood by Dust's side for this entire journey. You have watched him save this world. How can you continue to doubt? I just don't get it. It doesn't matter who he thinks he is. He's Dust. That's who he is. That's who I know. Fidget, please. I can't do this without you. Can you, uh... Can you repeat that? I said I can't do this without you. I'm sorry. I just... Nobody's ever said that to me before. And it won't be the last time, I assure you. Are you ready, Mithrarin? I am. Then we will meet you in the Everdawn Basin. Goodbye, Dust. We'll see you there. Well, that was a lot. So, now that we've had all this exposition dumped onto us, I think I'm going to call it a part. After I find a safe point. A safe point? A safe point. And conveniently, there's one right here. So, that was a lot. There was a lot of information that was just dumped right onto us from that cutscene. So, um, I would like to thank you guys for watching. I have been Shazel Games, and this has been Dust and Elysian Tail. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that good shish, and don't forget to check out my social media, baby. And I'll see you guys in the next part. Goodbye.